Hi everyone. Uh, since everybody, almost everybody has a cell phone, I thought that is a good idea to prepare this short lecture for those handy information whenever you need it uh, to refresh your uh, memory. You can refer to these uh, three clips. The first one will be Doppler, all Doppler we do on Echo, and then M mode, and finally 2D. Let's do it. First, we, on the uh, plaques, we go RVIT, we do continuous and color, put widget over the uh, TR, if there is any TR, as much as possible parallel, then we measure peak. If there is significant uh, TR, it's not a bad idea, we measure uh, VTI of TR, but it's not mandatory. Then we go to the RVOT, doesn't matter, modify or non-modify, any of them will be correct. We put continuous exactly on the Doppler, uh, color Doppler. If there is any PI, we put exactly parallel to that. And if we have significant PI, we measure peak PI and endosteolic. And we measure peak Vmax, uh, pulmonary uh, uh, continuous way on the pulmonary artery. If it was over uh, 2 meter per second for a uh, Vmax of PA, uh, we do VTI. Then we go uh, parse Doppler on the RVOT, the same view, right before the pulmonary uh, valve, then we measure acceleration time. Just make sure exactly correspond starting at the R after click and the peak. Then we have study on the PZAC on tricuspid valve, the same way, continuous, and we measure uh, Vmax. Then we go pulmonary on PZAX, then again repeat continuous. Then if we have significant any of those PI, we measure uh, peak and endosteolic, and finally peak pulmonary continuous. Then we go put pulse exactly before the valve, sample volume, and measure acceleration time. Uh, the next study Doppler is apical four chamber. Uh, we try to find any jet fanning up and down, uh, make it parallel as much as possible, parallel or cursor to the jet, especially neck of the jet. If there is uh, more than mild MR, we do VTI. Otherwise, we just measure peak of the uh, MR. And if we have any calcification on mitral valve or, or any evidence of the mitral valve stenosis or peak of the uh, inflow of the mitral valve go over 1.5, uh, then VTI. Don't forget, for VTI, we start exactly correspond if we have MR after MR, and then we finish it to the next MR. Uh, another word exactly correspond with the Q on the QRS. Sometimes the heart rate is very slow and between A, E and A uh, space, still you have to go uh, trace the envelope belong to the mitral valve inflow. Then we go pulse wave Doppler at the tip of the mitral valve opening, they kissing each other, make as much as possible parallel. Then we go measure E and A. Sometimes E and A confusing. The best way is that E is right after a T and A is before QRS. That is help you a lot. Sometimes we have L at here, L wave. That is the osteoic dysfunction. So be aware of that and just go landmark uh, and uh, those tips. After T is E, before QRS will be A, and then deceleration time. If they fuse together, you don't need to go all the way end. When they fuse it, you can put that peak and the spot that correspond parallel exactly, contact the slope uh, and at the conjoining those E and A, the end point will be enough. Then we go pulmonary vein. For pulmonary vein, we have to find it, if you need it, decrease uh, color scale around 40, that will be great. Fan up and down, 
find the, the right pulmonary vein here, make it put sample volume inside of the pulmonary vein and uh, get the Doppler S and V. Your S and V is very important how you differentiate it, which one is S and D. S standing for systolic D diastole. So S is at the after QRS. After QRS, dependent of many other parameters, any spot between uh, QRS and T. That will be your S and D will be after T. Sometimes you have a uh, three uh, wave, one of them S1, S2, and D. You measure S2, and that corresponds usually with the T wave. Then we go for the tissue doppler, medial and lateral. Uh, just make sure your sample is over the cross of the heart, not down the valve. Then your E will be after T. After click, you can see here IV, IVRT, isovolumic relaxation time, this click. So that one negative shift, it will be E prime and A prime. A prime is before QRS. So that is your, those landmark, you can find them and measure it. Lateral the same way, uh, after T is negative E prime and before QRS will be A prime. Then we go apical 2, again check for the NEMR, if there is, then we put Kerze continuous, if there is any significant, we can measure it on VTI. We go apical 3, in apical 3 we repeat on the mitral valve continuous, then we go apical, uh, on apical 3, put color on the aorta, find as much as possible, uh, par make parallel your Kerze, to the jet through the aorta. Then you go and if it's parallel, we, we do VTI of the aorta. If there is any significant and clear, sharp border, a strong border of the AI, you measure uh, pressure half time, peak to end, and slope. You just make sure you have sharp. Uh, border at the slope otherwise don't measure it just measure peak and if it's significant is so about moderate AI do VTI of the uh, AI then you go 2D not colored put sample at the before right before the aortic valve then sample volume as much as possible Kerzel parallel then VTI of the LVOT after that we go 5 chamber make the same uh, concept parallel and continuous and we do VTI optimize your scale of the Doppler make it maximum use it make it bigger and do VTI and if you have AI the same way pressure half time and VTI in the moderate or significant AI is good idea uh, VTI of the AI then sample volume, we put sample volume before the aortic valve here. Then pulse Doppler, we measure VTI of the LVOT that finally machine calculate for us a stroke volume based on the uh, LVOT diameter we measure. Then we go for the right side, we go beside of the TAPSI, we go TAPSV or tissue Doppler of the lateral annulus of tricuspid, we measure S prime. S prime your landmark is be curving. There are many times a click that belong to the IVCT here. Two click you can see closing and opening valve correspond to the QR and S prime is the curve after that. That is your S prime peak measuring. The normal you can check it, have it for your references. Then we go uh, TR, check it TR. Here, as you can see, we have two types of the direction jet. One goes the septal, one go lateral or central. So if we put here is not parallel, we will all uh, underestimate it. Here, for example, 22. If we go uh, off axis medial, as you can see here, our curve will be parallel here become 29. So seven millimeter different. Uh, my general, uh, my uh, recommendation is that for uh, tricuspid, always uh, do in L every patient three view apical regular apical for one rv uh, focused view and finally this view medial 
uh, full chamber off axis focus on the tricuspid. Then we go hepatic, middle hepatic vein, parse Doppler, especially those have significant uh, TR, pulmonary hypertension, restrictive cardiomyopathy, pericarditis, cardi uh, pericardial effusion, all of them, generally speaking, in every patient is, is good idea to middle hepatic vein, parse Doppler, in long axis subcostal, we put one centimeter, the joint to the middle hepatic vein to the IVC and then sample. Again, you lose the landmark. We have S and D. S is at the uh, systolic time, means after QRS up to T, that will be whatever it is, will be S, and after T will be D. Here, for example, you can see this patient has severe TR, uh, another patient, not this patient. So uh, here we have reverse S. And so you can see, is yeah, give you a lot of information. And I talk about those changes, middle, middle hepatic vein Doppler and interpretation in another uh, two lecture. Uh, at the end, uh, our uh, Doppler study for the transthoracic is suprasternal notch, long axis. We do uh, continuous, especially for rule outing the coarctation here. And then whenever you have uh, AI, especially significant AI, we have to put sample at the thoracic descending aorta here, and those patients that has post uh, TAVR or any AVR, artificial valve replacement, we have to put sample here and measure acceleration time. Next two lectures will be about M modes in echo, and then another one is 2D uh, study and measurement in echo like this, this one. Up to the next time, have a wonderful time.